first mock draft of the season here. So the Major League Baseball season starts April 1st, and here's a 10-team mock draft, and I'm going to do the whole thing, and we'll see how long this draft takes and where these guys are going. So right now, we're on the second pick, the first pick, Fernando Tatis Jr., and we saw Tatis Jr. get the huge contract here in the offseason, a 14-year deal. Ronald Acuna, he goes number two. He's a stud, no doubt about it. Last season in the shortened year, it was a down year for Acuna, but he's still a great player, and I think he's decent at the number two spot to get. Wow, Manny Machado going number three. That's a little bit far-fetched here, and now I'm up here. Either Jacob DeGrom, Soto, Turner, we got Christian Yelich, Mike Trout. I think I'm going to go with Mike Trout. You can't go wrong with Trout. Every season, Trout puts up big numbers. And last season in the half season, 17 homers, 46 RBIs, and he still batted 281 was Mike Trout. And for me to get him in number five, I think he's definitely a steal to start my roster off. And we see Juan Soto go number six. And Juan Soto, he's a total stud. No bat doubt about it. And last season batting 351, even though he didn't play the whole 60 game season as well. But Soto, he's one of the best ball players already in the major leagues. And he's a total stud, no doubt about it. And he's only 22 years old. Now the pitch is coming off. Trey Turner going seven. You know what you're going to get from him. Stolen bases, good batting average, a lot of runs scored, and some pop. Jacob DeGrom and Garrett Cole, it's a close debate. Who's the best pitcher in baseball? But I'm going to give it to Jacob DeGrom just by a bit. And DeGrom, each and every season, this guy seems like he gets better. Even though last season was the first year in three years, he didn't win the Cy Young. Losing it to Trevor Bauer. But I still think Jacob DeGrom is better than we see Cole at 9. Number 10, Christian Yelich, who had a little bit of a down season last year in the batting average category. Only batting 205, but two seasons ago, you see here the monster numbers. 39 home runs, 91 RBIs, 20 stolen bases, and a 279 batting average. But I think pitching's important this season in fantasy baseball. And I'm going to try to get pitchers... After this second or third round, this is where I'm going to go pitcher heavy, unless they're just knowing their worth. Now the last two picks going. We see Trevor Story at 11. The Rockies trading Arenado in the offseason, hoping to lock Story up. And Story, he had a huge season last year. 11 home runs, 28 RBIs with a 289 average. Shane Bieber, number 12. He was a stud last season, and I think he'll continue for Bieber, even though this Indian team is in kind of a rebuild after trading Francisco Lindor to the New York Mets. Freddie Freeman, 13, he's a stud each and every season. And two seasons ago, 35 home runs, 125 RBIs. And now I'm up again. We got Lindor here. We got Harper, Darvish, Cody Bellinger. I'm going to go with Francisco Lindor with his new ball club here with the New York Mets. And on the season, they're projecting a pretty good season for Lindor. 28 home runs, 77 RBIs, 20 stolen bases, and a 271 batting average. And now John Heyman saying the extension talks are going to be talked out this week between the Mets and Lindor. And why not? You just traded for him. You might as well lock him up. It's probably going to take a 10-year deal to get this Lindor deal done, but he's only 27 years old, and he's going to get his 25 to $30 million a year, and he's the type of player you give that money. He hustles, he's Mr. Smiles, and he's always looking to win. Walker Bueller, number 17 on the season, they're going to project them 13 wins with 190 strikeouts, a 2.89 ERA, and an 0.92 whip. So Walker Bueller, he's been great the last few seasons. Then Arenado, number 18, with his new ball club in St. Louis. And now I'm up once again. We got Rendon. We got Scherzer here. I think Scherzer is still one of the top pitchers in baseball, even though last season was a little bit of a down year. I'm taking him here. You need a good pitching staff with two or three aces at least in fantasy baseball. You always could find hitting, in my opinion. And right here, I'm going with Scherzer. I think Washington, they're going to have a good season here. And Scherzer, he's going to get a lot of victories and pitch well once again. So we saw Arenado number 18. He's a stud. I know he's leaving Coors Field, but still, I think he's going to put up huge numbers and be a good ball player here. Giolito, what a season he had last year. 
was Gio Ito, and he, here he's going number 19, maybe a little bit of a reach this early in fantasy drafts. Then you Darvish, number 20, with his new ball club over there in San Diego, where they're going to be a stacked ball club, but he definitely went early here was you Darvish. Number 21, Clayton Kershaw. I think he still has two or three good years left in him. And last season, they finally got over the hump was Kershaw and the Dodgers in the playoffs winning the World Series. And Kershaw, he's a free agent after the year, so I think he's going to pitch good. He wants one more big contract as long as money-wise, maybe not years. Bryce Harper, 22, last season was a great year for Harper in the home run department. And two seasons ago, was pretty good as well, so he's 22, Aaron Judge 23, and I think it's a little bit of a reach with his injury history, and him just getting hurt each and every year, that's what it comes down to with Judge, but hopefully Judge, he could stay healthy this year, and play good for this ball Yankee ball club, because they got a lot of injury concerns in the starting rotation, and obviously their hit is like Judge Stanton, and even LeMay, who was banged up as well last year. Corey Seager, 24. He was a little bit of a reach as well. But last season, he was solid in the 60-game year. 15 home runs, 41 RBIs for Seager. And a 307 batting average. So, at 24, not so bad. I got Scherzer at 25. Cody Bellinger, number 26. We know he's a stud. And he had an MVP season two years ago. And he's on pace to return next week in the spring training games. So now I'm up once again. We got Woodruff, Ozuna, Vlad Jr. here. We got Albies. Not a lot of good pitching options. We got George Springer. I think I'm going to go with Albies here. Second base, a weak position. And Albert, Ozzy Albies, he's a great ball player, no doubt about it. And they're projecting him this season. 25 home runs, 85 RBIs, 14 stolen bases, a 283 batting average, and 104 runs for Albies. So right now my team's lining up pretty decent. I got Albies, Francisco Lindor, Mike Trout, and Max Scherzer to start things off here in the first four rounds. Now back to the other draft picks. Bo Bichette, number 27. He's a young, young up-and-coming player here for this Toronto Blue Jay team, and I think he's going to do good things. Maybe he was a little bit of a reach, but also in his average pick, he's going 24. Out of Birdo, Mondesi, 28 here. He's going to steal a lot of bases. He's a good ball player and one of the only bright spots for the Kansas City Royals in the last few seasons where they really struggled. Aaron Nola, he's definitely a true ace. And he goes number 29 here. Him assures it was my pick, but I just like the track record assures it just a little better than Nola. 30, Anthony Rendon, he's with the Angels in his second season, and Rendon last year in the half a year, he still played pretty decent with a 286 batting average, 9 home runs, 31 RBIs. Now I'm up once again here, and the clock's running pretty quick, and the picks are coming in, and right now the starting pitching, I'm not in love with it. Who's out here? We got Woodruff, Glasnow, G Gallen, Carlos Carrasco, Sonny Gray, Hendricks, Grinky. I think I'm going to go with another bat here at this time in the draft. And I'm going to go... Lewis Robert, the computer picked for me here. I didn't make the pick in time, but whatever. Lewis Robert, top prospect last season for this Chicago White Sox team. And last year, he only batted 233. With 11 home runs, 31 RBIs, and 9 stolen bases. But in a full season this year, they're projecting them. 27 homers, 82 RBIs, and a whopping 29 stolen bases. So right now... Bogart's number 31... He's been a fixture over there in Boston for years and one of the only bright spots as well. 32, Pete Alonso. He was the home run champion a few seasons ago in his rookie year with 53 home runs for the Polar Bear. And this season, I think it will be a bounce back. Last year, the power still was there. 16 home runs in only two months for Alonso. And this year, they're projecting him to crack 40 with 41 home runs. So we'll see what he could do this year for the Mets. And this Mets team is pretty improved and more protection in the lineup. Luis Castillo, 33. He was the better pitcher, I think, over the last few seasons for this red team. Even better than Trevor Bauer, in my opinion. Even though Bauer won the Cy Young.
So I'm up again right here. We got Alvarez, Ramunto, Luke Voigt, Anthony Rizzo, Herrera, J.D. Martinez. Bunch of pretty good guys here. But I'm going to go with Glaber Torres in this position. And Glaber, he had a down year last year with the injuries and stuff. So right now I got Albies, Francisco Lindor, Mike Trout, Luis Robert, Glaber Torres, and Max Scherzer. My pitching is definitely going to take a hit here, though, this season in fantasy baseball. Unless I start to find some gems in the next few rounds here. But let's go to the other picks. We saw Ozuna. Bregman, 34. He's a start. He'll have a great season. Flaherty, 35. He should be the ace once again here for this St. Louis Cardinal team. Albies, 36. DJ LeMahieu, 37. He got the nice contract from the Yankees in the offseason. Six years, 90 million. Strasburg, 38. His thing is only health, but if he pitches well and can be healthy, he's going to be a great ball player for fantasy owners and a Washington national team that I believe is underrated. Jose Abreu, monster season last year. He goes number 39. Marcelo Zuna, back with the Braves, number 40. And right now, I'm going to start targeting starting pitching here. We got Carlos Carrasco. We got Grinky on the board. And I like Zach Grinky. I might be reaching here. He's ranked 87th. They got him going in average picks, but I'm taking Grinky, and I think he bounces back, I got Albies at 36, 41 now, George Springer, with Toronto, I could see the numbers falling off in the next few seasons for Springer, but I think at 41 is a good spot to get him here in fantasy drafts, 42, Tim Anderson, he was a good shortstop the last few seasons in fantasy baseball, and last year he had a nice 322 for the Shy Sox, and I think he does good again. Another Chicago White Sox off the board right after them. Lance Wynn, who they acquired earlier in the offseason. Number 43 in this one, and I think he was a reach as well as Lynn. He's not really a guy I could trust 100% after having a couple seasons where he was up and down. Great one season, he was bad the other, but he goes 43. Blake Snell, 44, and I think Snell has a great season and definitely bounces back this year, especially with a great team like the San Diego Padres, who has a lot of offense, a lot of run support they're going to give him, and him just pitching in the National League makes him a better option than he was in Tampa Bay. I got Robert at 45, Raphael Devers 46, and Devers, we know he has power, we know he's going to drive in probably over 100 runs, and he's a mainstay over there in Boston as well, especially with Ben and Tenney traded, Stalin Marte, number 47, he's on the Marlins once again this season, I thought he would have got traded in the offseason, but nothing came up of it, maybe at the trade deadline, he'll get traded, Brandon Woodrow, 48 here for the Milwaukee Brewers, and Woodrow, he was great last season, we'll see what he could do in a full year here, and he's the ace of that staff, and the Brewers, they made a couple winning type of moves this offseason, and I think Woodrow, he'll be fine, 49, Aloy Jimenez, Great prospect for the Chicago White Sox. And you know he could definitely pitch. Could hit the baseball very good. Carlos Carrasco I'm going to take here. He was great last season with the Indians. And now he's on a Met team that's pretty stacked and going to play good baseball. And win a lot of games if they stay healthy. Vlad Jr., 50 here. And Vlad Jr., he shredded a lot of weight. In the offseason, and last year was a pretty disappointment, but now Vlad Jr. saying he hasn't felt this good since 2019. So hopefully this is a good breakout season for one of the top prospects in all of baseball over the last few seasons. And the hype train as well with him, with Merrifield number 51. He's been a mainstay over there in Kansas City, and he's a great player. Suarez, 52. Big power hitter, another guy who was in a lot of trade rumors in the offseason. But Cincinnati didn't budge. 53, Nelson Cruz, he's 42 years old, but he's still got pop. And they're projecting him this season to crack 35 home runs this year. And we'll see if he could do it, but he only qualifies at utility. Kyle Tucker, 54, he's going to have a starting role now every day with George Springer gone and going to... Toronto, but we'll see if Tucker can live up to this pick here at number 54. Javier Baez, 55. He's a good ball player. He's in a contract season, and we'll see what he can do. Now I'm up again. We got Dylan Bundy, Jose Barrios, Kyle Hendricks on the ball, Dilson Lament, Zach Plezak, 
right here, I think I'm going to go Kyle Hendricks. I know Chicago, they've traded a few players off this offseason, but I still think Hendricks is a solid ball player. He could pitch the baseball well and help a lot of fantasy teams out there. I got Glaber at 56. The thing with Glaber is health. And if he stays healthy, we know the potential and the big numbers Torres could put up here for this New York Yankee team and fantasy owners. And I think I got him in a decent spot here in the sixth round. 57, Tyler Glasnow, if he could stay healthy, this guy's top of the rotation and ain't stuff we've seen from him the last few seasons in Tampa. Chris Bryant, 58. Hopefully he could have a bounce back season after two seasons ago. He did crack the 30 home run mark, but last year was a down year for Chris Bryant. Keep it going here for this ball club, and I think he'll get it going Is Bryant going into the free agent year, and he's going to want a $200 million contract, so he's going to have to perform, in my opinion. JT Romuto, he's got the $125 million, but he's banged up with the fractured thumb, and he's hoping he's ready by opening day, and he's still one of the best catchers in all of baseball, if not the best. Josh Hader, another guy who was in the rumors this offseason but didn't get dealt, and he should be the closer possibly here from Milwaukee. He goes at 60. 61 Liam Hendricks. He got a huge contract. And a record second deal for a closer. Getting that huge deal for $54 million for three years. He should be the White Sox closer. Arizona, we saw a great you know, postseason out of him. And hopefully he continues for Tampa. He goes 62. 63 Chris Paddock. One of the best pitchers, young pitchers, I should say, in all of baseball. And he's on the Padres, who's a stacked ball club and who should win 100-plus games this year. Luke Voigt, 64. He won the home run title last season where he hit a whopping 22 home runs in only 60 games as the power guy in Luke Voigt. And now I'm up once again. We got Matt Chapman. We got Giancarlo Stanton, who we know is a monster, but can he stay healthy? Tommy Pham, Reese Hoskins. I'm going to go with Stanton here. I think Stanton, he's going to stay healthy this year and put a lot of balls in the stands. And I got him only for power purposes. And right now, I got Oz Albies. I got Lindor, Trout, Robert, Stanton, Gleyber Torres, Scherzer, Zach Grinke, Carlos Carrasco, and Kyle Hendricks so far here to get my team going. So I like the way my team is looking so far here in this now back to the picks, Zach Grinke, I got him 65, still on Houston, still could be solid, and I think he could win double digits, and at this point was a good get. Alvarez, 66, his teammate, Zach Allen, 67, I think he was a reach, 68, Chapman, he suspended once again as Chapman, but you know he's going to get a lot of save opportunities with one of the better teams in baseball with the New York Yankees, Herrera, 68. I'm up again. We got Freed. We got Valdez. We got Gorsman, Pablo Lopez, Urias, Patrick Corbin, who I think could definitely bounce back for this Washington team. But I'm going to see what I need. I need a first baseman. I need a catcher and stuff. Who do we got on the board? We got Carlos Correa. I'm going to go with a starter. Then when Bundy last season was amazing. And hopefully once again this year, he could can continue where he left off. 69 Herrera, 70 Kenta Maeda on the Twins. Corey Burns, 71. He was pretty good. James Cochranick, this guy, he was a reach here. He might be the closer for this team, but I don't like getting closers to the later rounds because I think after the first three or four guys at the closer position, it's definitely a crapshoot. Anthony Rizzo, 74. Yo, Makata, 75. Pretty good range. I got Carrasco, 76. J.D. Martinez, 77. And Martinez, he struggled mightily last season with Boston. But the 2020 season, like I said, you could throw out most of it. Goldschmidt, 78. 79. Jose Altuve. I think Altuve was still pretty decent last year. Even though the average was low, he still put up the other stats. But maybe with the, at the cheating, he's a player... That needed the cheating and he's not going to produce at a high level anymore. Marte 80, 81 Sonny Gray, Ryu 82, Zach Wheeler 83. So we saw tons of pitches come off the board here in the late 8th round to the ninth here. Brandon Lowe 84, 85 I got Hendricks, Nicholas Castellanos another guy who was in the rumors but he didn't get traded as well. 86. He's going to give you powers, RBIs and a decent batting average. Conforto 87. Now, I'm up here 
We're going to see what's on the board, Tammy Fam. Eddie Rosario with his new ball club. Reese Hoskins, I need some cheap power and a first baseman. And getting Hoskins here, I don't think it's the worst of things. And right now, I got a decent ball club, in my opinion. I'm going to hit for homies. I got some decent stolen base guys. But I'm going to have a problem, I think, with batting average for the most part in this fantasy draft. If this league was a real league, it's just, you know, a mock. But anyway, Gavin Biggio, 88. Iglesias, we saw him get traded way early in the offseason. He's going to be the closer for the Angels. At 89, that's a decent spot. Toscar Hernandez, we saw the pop last season for Hernandez. He went number 90 in this draft. 91, Trent Gresham, he was pretty decent in half a season with a good batting average, and he showed pop as well for this San Diego Padre team was Grisham. Gurriel Jr. on Toronto, 92. Max Monk, C93. Berrios, 94. I'm up once again here. Carlos Correa, at this point, I might as well take him and have him at my utility spot. Correa, another player in a contract season here. So right now, I think my team's pretty loaded and I only need a third baseman and a catcher. And I'm only going to get a, a bench hitter or two here and go pitching the rest of the way with the hitting I put together in this league. So Iglesias, 89, 91 Gresham, Max Muncy, 93, Berrios, 94, Charlie Blackman, 95. We'll see if Blackman could have a good season. He got off to a slow start last year, but he really picked things up as the season went on and he finished the season over the 300 batting average. Giancarlo Stanton, I got a 96. Health's the only issue with him. Jensen, 97. He's going to be the closer for the Dodgers once again. Matt Chapman, 98. He's going to be a good ball player. I know he had the hip injury, and that could be a concern, but I think he'll be fine. Justin Turner back with the Los Angeles Dodgers once again, number 99. And I think it definitely was a reach here for Justin Turner at 99. I don't think he'll play a full season. He got the big money, and right now he's up there in age at 36 years old. So I don't think at 99 he's a great pick. Austin Meadows, he's a top prospect the last few seasons. A lot of hype with him, but he's been only a mediocre ball player. But to get him at 100, I think's a decent and safe way at the end of the 10th round. Alec Bohm, top prospect for Philly. We saw flashes of him last season. And at 101, I don't think it's the worst pick. And we'll see what he could do. Charlie Morton, he's in Atlanta now. He signed in November, so he's been with the Braves a while already since the offseason started. And I think Morton, he could be decent for this Atlanta team and fantasy owners. And I don't have a problem with him at 102. Gavin Lux, 103. Top prospect of the Dodgers the last few seasons. And I think he could be pretty decent. Now we I'm on the board again. We got David Price, Marcos Gonzalez. We got Henny, Urias, Corbin. I'm going to go Corbin here. I think he bounces back this season with this Washington National team. Who I'm pretty high on, believe it or not. With the few moves they made with Brad Hand, Josh Bell, and getting Schwarber and John Lester this offseason. Matt Olson, 104. We know he's a big power bat for this Oakland A team. And he's going to hit 30, 35 home runs, maybe even more this season. And at this point in the draft to get him, that's pretty good. So 106, Salvador Perez. He missed the last two seasons for the most part. But Perez, I think he could be decent. And last year, he did come back with the vengeance, though. And he's a good ball player, is Perez. And one of the better catches as well. Brad Hand, we saw go off the board. Dylan Bundy, I got 105. Musgrove on the Padres as well. He's probably going to be their fourth or fifth starter. And another great landing spot for him. Max Freed, 108 with the Atlanta Braves. And Freed, he had some flashes last season but the consistency is going to be the thing with him Dansby Swanson 109 110 Will Myers here I think Myers he could show the pop and the production especially in a stacked lineup where pitches they're not going to pay attention to Myers as much 111 Jesus Lazardo. he's probably going to be a starter here for this team and he was a top prospect for the Oakland A's and we'll see what he could do Brad Hand he's the closer he spurned the Mets to get a closing job this offseason with Washington and I think he'll be pretty decent he's been a top reliever the last few seasons and I don't think anything less of it again Will Smith 113 he's gonna be the starting catcher for the Dodgers he was a top prospect over there 
a few seasons ago. Now I'm going to look for some saves. We got Archie Brad. We, we got Kyle May, who I think could close for this ball club. And we also got Mark Melanson as well. But I'm going to go here with Alexi Kyle May. He's on Minnesota. And I think Minnesota, they still could compete decently in this division. Dilson Lamette, 114. He was a good ball player last season for the San Diego Padre team. Zach Plezak, 115. He was on a good pace, Plezak, before he came down with the COVID. Him and Mike Clevenger went out partying or whatever the deal may be. But anyway, he's going to be a good player, I think. And one of the Yankees in that rotation with Zach, with Bieber. 116, I got Hoskins. 117, Ian Anderson. He was a top prospect for Atlanta last season. And this year, he'll probably crack the rotation. Mike Clevenger, he's on the 60-day DL here. But you could still stash him on your team and see what he could do. Lance McCullers, 119 for the Houston Astros. He should be back full strength this season. Jeff McNeil, New York Mets, plays second, third in outfield this season. He'll be the second baseman where Robinson Cano suspended the season. And I think he's going to produce pretty well for the Mets and fantasy owners. Good average, good power, and a bounce back year. Soroka, he's day-to-day. -day. Hopefully he could get healthy and get on the mound by opening day. Ryan Presley definitely could be the closer here for Houston. And at 122, it's not a bad pick. 123, Grandal. Big power back, good catcher, 124, Byron Buxton, an exciting young outfielder here for the Twins, and just, he's got to be consistent, that's the only thing with him, I got Correa, 125 in a contract year, I think he'll be good, I'm on the board once again, and I'm going on Melanton, he's on a team that easily could win 100 or more ball games if we play a full season here, so now I'm set at the closer position, I usually only take two closes, and I got right now Melanton, and Alex Colomay, so I'm going to be ideal with that at the closer position. And I got these guys in the 15th or 16th round, and that's where I usually look to target closers, especially here in a 10-team league. I think that's fine where to target them. So 126, Moustakis, he was a guy also on the trade block. But Cincinnati, they really didn't make any roster moves this offseason with trading guys. So that's where he went, was... At that time. Then we go Wilson Contreras. I still think he could produce. For this Cub team. But he was also a guy. In trade talks. Yastrzemski 128. He was one of the brightest spots. In the San Francisco Giant team. That's been struggling the last few seasons. Dom Smith 129. The only thing with Dom. Will he get enough playing time over there. With the New York Mets. Where they got five outfielders now. In Conforto Dom Smith. Uh, Mora, Jeff McNeil could play some outfield as well. Brandon Nimmo and Kevin Pillar. So with Dom Smith, he was the Mets' pure, best pure hitter last season. And it's just a playing time thing this year. I'm up once again. I'm going to need some starting pitching, in my opinion. And you can never have enough starting pitching in fantasy baseball or real-life baseball. Obviously, we got Kluber. We got Paxton on the board. We got Marcus Stroman, and I'm going to go Stroman here. Stroman, it's a contract season for him. I know he signed the qualifying offer with the New York Mets, and this year he's making $18 million. Well, hopefully he could be good once again, and I think he could help fantasy owners. So right now I got a pretty decent rotation, I think. I got Grinky, I got Max Scherzer, I got Carlos Carrasco, I got Kyle May and Melance in my closes. Then I got Hendricks, Dylan, Bunzi, Dylan Bundy, Marcus Stroman. So I think it's a pretty rounded team. And for the hitting, I need a catcher and a third baseman as well. And probably one or two bench spots with six more rounds left in this fantasy draft here for the 2021 season. So then we got Soroka, Presley, Grandal I went over. Mustakis, Framber, Valdez I got up to. Valdez, good starter last season for Houston. And he's definitely going to be the third or fourth starter, maybe even number two in this rotation in the early going. Kevin Gorsman, he was good with San Francisco last season, and we'll see if he could do it over over once again here. So Lair, 132, good power bat, hit 40 home runs a couple seasons ago, but he's going to have a low batting average, is Jorge. 
Solaire for this Kansas City Royal team. Trevor Rosen for 133. He signed with Oakland. $11 million deal. And he's going to take over for Hendricks as the closer. So in the 14th round, that's a good get. Frankie Montez, 134. He's going to be a decent starter. Pablo Lopez, he's going to start. I got Corbin, 136, where I think at this point, some of the guys going ahead of him is a steal. Travis Darno, great season last year with Atlanta, 137. Alex Verdugo, hopefully he could mold into the top prospect he was supposed to be here after being the big trade piece in the Mookie Betts deal. Tommy Pham, 139. Sixto Sanchos, he was a top prospect here for this Miami Marlins team. And he pitched good last season in the few games he started. Marcos Gonzalez, 141. Michael Brantley, 142. Noah Syndergaard, still on the IL list. He's coming back in May or June, 143. He won in this draft. So right now I need a catcher and a third baseman to go with my team. We got Nola. He's on San Diego. We got James McCann of the Mets. Buster Posey, his best days are behind him. Yadier Molina, I think I'm going to go with Nola here, where he could play a lot of positions, and he might play everywhere and play five or six times a week here for the San Diego Padre, Padre team, and we know catcher is a weak position, so I need third base, we got Sano, we got Ursula, or I could even move to third base on my team, <clears throat> a couple guys around them, maybe shuffle, but I'm going to just try to go out there and get a third baseman next. And who do we got at the third base? We got to know, like I said, Edmund Ursula, J.D. Davis, Austin Riley, who should be a decent piece this year for this Brave team with Josh Donaldson leaving a couple seasons ago. Segura, Gurriel, who was pretty decent last year, Hunt Dozier, La Stella. But I think I'm going to go with Sano. Sano last season, he did hit 13 home runs with 25 RBIs. Another batting average was in the dumps at 204. But besides that, I think he could produce for fantasy owners. And at this point in the 19th round, I'm going to go with him there. So now back to the picks. Syndergaard, he's hurt out to May of June. Nick Anderson, he could be a closer or the swingman for Tampa, 144. Kyle May, I got 145. Urias, 146. Jonathan VR, he's on the New York Mets. He's going to be a utility man playing everywhere this season. So we'll see how that shake out. But to get VR at 147, not bad. He'll steal bases. He'll get on base. And he's got some poppers too. Eddie Rosario, 148. We know he's got power. And he's on the Cleveland Indians this season. Gary Sanchez, he's a horrible batting average player. But if you need some power at the catching position, he still tops at that in this league. Kirby Yates, 150 in this draft. He could be the closer this season for the Toronto Blue Jays. 151, David Price. He took last season off because of the protocols and safe issues. 152, Sandy Alcantara. 153, Joey Gallo. 154, Andrew Henney. Henney just never gets things going, I believe, for his career. And he's still on the Los Angeles Angels somehow. 155, Tyra Maul. 156, I got Melanson. Ian Happ, 157, could be this year, be the year where Happ puts everything together, hopefully, for him and the Chicago Cubs' purposes. 158, Aaron Saval, he had some decent starts last season. And with Carlos Carrasco traded this year, he's definitely going to have an everyday rotation spot here for this ball club in Cleveland. Herman Marquez, 159. He's a decent starter, but this Rocky team, I don't think will win many ball games this year. 160, Drew Pomerantz, good starter, good reliever flash guy, but he's probably going to be a reliever now for San Diego. Devin Williams, 161. He's a good reliever, but I don't think he's going to be closing this season for this ball club in Milwaukee, where you still got Josh Hader on the contract and on the roster. Now I need some starting pitching to roll my team out. We got McKenzie. We got Corey Kluber. We got Paxton. Some injury-prone guys over there. Dallas Keuchel. We got Jordan Means, and I'm going to go with Keuchel here. He was pretty decent last season with the Chicago White Sox, and he could round out my back end of rotation 
in fantasy baseball. We got Pomerantz, we got Keg Kimbrel, 162. Good move to get the closer at this point of the fantasy draft to Kimbrel. 163, Josh Bell, the new first baseman over there in Washington. 164, Marcus Simeon, he's on Toronto this season, and he'll probably play some second or third base. Stroman, 165 this year. He's trying to get the big bag next season. He's getting $18 million this year, but I drafted him, and I think he'll be pretty good on a Met team that should win 85 to 90 ball games. Chris Bassett, he should be a starter with Oakland this season. 166, 167, Rafael Montero. He's going to be the closer, most likely, in Seattle. 168, Fran Mio Reyes. We know he's a low batting average guy, but he's got pop where he could hit 30-plus home runs. And in the 17th round of the draft, not bad. Anthony Santander, I think he was a steal at this point of the draft. Last season, he got off to an amazing start. And then he fizzled out a little, but Santander, he definitely could put up numbers and be a good ball player for fantasy owners. So now I'm up once again here in the 21st round of this fantasy draft. And I'm going to go one more starter, Chris Sale. We know he's hurt and injured. He could come back. King Felix is down here. But right now I'm going to go with this one. I think James Paxton, he could be decent for the Seattle Mariners the ball club. And he got a decent contract. And when this guy pitches, he's pretty effective. And right now, he's a back end of the rotation guy for my fantasy team. I really can't complain about getting Paxton here in the 21st round, taking a flyer on him. And if he fizzles out, you just go out there and drop him. So two more rounds left in this draft. But I'm going to still go through the picks where we were. So I was at Santander, 169, definitely a steal. Zach Eflin, we've seen flashes of him the last few seasons, but at 170, I guess he's worth the risk. 171, Christian Vasquez, pretty good catcher for Boston with some pop. 172, Dylan Moore, he's going to start for the Seattle Mariner team, but we'll see where, but he qualifies at second, third, short in outfield. Jose Raquidi, he was one of the better prospects for this Houston team. And he's going to have a rotation spot, and he's a good get this late in the draft. Taylor Rogers, he could be in the closer mix as well for this Minnesota Twin team. So in the 18th round, not a bad get. Dustin May, pretty good pitcher, 175. Austin Knoll, I got him as my catcher, 176. Josh Donaldson, 177. Hopefully Donaldson could be a bounce-back player. And I think he's a steal this far in the draft. 178, Paul DeJong of the St. Louis Cardinals. DeJong, we've seen him put up numbers in his career. And I like where he went in this one. At 178, 179, Shante Atani, the pitching version of him. So hopefully this year he's healthy after going under Tommy John. 180, Keon Hayes of the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's going to get opportunities and a lot of playing time, I believe, for this Pirate team. And I'm up once again, and I'm going to take Seth Manaya in this one. So one more round left, and I'm just going to get one bat to fill out my bench because I think my hitting's a pretty good part. On my fantasy team. And we got some hitters here. Guriel, Hicks, Terrace, Wentzel, who was a top prospect. Yasiel Puig, but he still hasn't signed with a club. Elvis Andrus, Jesus Aguilar. We got J.D. Davis. We got Cole Calhoun also. But I'm just going to go for a power guy who could get me some cheap numbers. We got Adam Duvall, who signed with the Miami Marlins a couple weeks ago. So we'll see what he could do this season. For Miami. Hunter Renfro we got. We got Justin Upton. I'm going to go like I said with Adam Duvall here. And if he just can't put up similar numbers like he did last season. He's a guy you drop here in the last round of your fantasy draft. So this draft. Pretty good draft. Went pretty quick. Obviously it's a mock. And I'll be doing mocks from time to time here. As the season approaches. But with slow start in basketball this week and stuff, I figured I'd make a video here with a mock draft. And here we go. I'll go Adam Duvall to close out my draft. So now we'll go through the rest of these guys. 181, Ryan Mountain Castle. Pretty decent prospect for this Baltimore Oriole team. And we'll see what he could do this season. Ramon Lorero, he was a good hard-nosed ball player. For this Oakland Athletic team. And last season he didn't have greatest in numbers. But he's a good ball player in real life. And in fantasy baseball I think he could be a decent player. This season 
is Lorano. Jordan Hicks, 183. We know he's got a rocket arm. We know he throws the baseball hard, and we'll see what he could do for the Cardinals. Archie Bradley, 184, signed with Philly this offseason, and I believe he will be the closer. And to get a closer on a pretty decent team in the 19th round is not bad. Miguel Sano, I got him 185. I know it's going to be low average, but he's going to hit for power. Victor Robles, 186. We know he's going to steal bases and do his thing in that category for fantasy owners at 186. 187, Kyle Lewis, pretty high-ranked prospect for this ball club the last few seasons, but now he's going to have an opportunity pretty much every day for Seattle. Jerry Kalnick, maybe we'll see him this season, but right now he's got an abductor strain, and he was the big piece in the Edwin Diaz and Robinson Cano deal with the New York Mets a few seasons ago. And you know the Mets are probably kicking themselves with the old regime there with the Wilpons and obviously Brady, Brody Van Wagening. But those guys all got fired, obviously, with Steve Cohen taking over ownership. Didi Gregorius, to get him at 189 is a total steal, in my opinion. He's got pop. He's in a hit his ballpark still in Philly. And it's definitely a steal. 190, A.J. Pollock. The only thing with Pollock is health. We know he could put up numbers. We know he could steal bases and play pretty well. 191, Eric Hosmer. Hosmer on San Diego. He's going to be the fifth or sixth best hitter in this team. On this team, this team's loaded. And he's a great ball player. 192, Tony Goswin. He might be a swingman or possibly a starter once again here for the Dodgers. 193, Trey Mancini. Coming back after he was diagnosed with cancer last season. And hopefully Mancini could put up the big numbers like he did a few seasons ago. With 30 plus RB home runs. 194 Andrew McCutcheon. His best seasons are behind him in my opinion. But the 20th round of the draft. I think it's a good guy to take a flyer on. Dylan Carlson. Could, be this, could this be the season where he plays a lot of games. And becomes a top prospect like he was supposed to be. We're hitting and driving in runs. Dallas Keuchel, I got him 196. And Keuchel, he's been decent the last few seasons. And I think at this point of the draft, it's one of my back-end starters. I like him in 196, 197, Corey Kluber. The only thing with Kluber is health in the last two seasons. With Cleveland and Texas last year, he hasn't been healthy. And now he's on a Yankee team that could win a lot of ball games. But health is going to be the concern. Sean Murphy... 198 a catcher not a bad get Max Kepler 199 definitely a steal in my opinion with his stolen base prowess and also his pop at the top of the order for the Minnesota Twins 200 Christian Walker we've seen flashes and power from him Tristan McKenzie he should be in the rotation this season with a few spots opening up in the last year and a half with the trade last season of Clevenger and the trade of Carlos Carrasco this season Tommy Edmond he's a utility man and he should play all over the diamond here for the St. Louis Cardinal team and at 202 it's a good steal Carlos Santana can he bounce back this season with his new ball club in Kansas City getting a pretty decent contract and the Royals they had a pretty good offseason in my opinion Lorenzo Cain 204 he sat out most of last season so we'll see if he bounces back this year after having rest and the safe safe and health issues 205 I got Paxton he's back in Seattle this season and in the 21st round to get him I think he'll be fine Gio Ursula 206 He's going to be a good mainstay in this Yankee offense. And he only always finds a way to be a starter or play a lot of ball games with their injuries. Jake Cronwith, he'll be another utility guy here for the San Diego Padres. Clint Frazier, 208. He's still on the Yankees somehow where for many off seasons. We've heard him in the rumblings, but the Yankees have held on. Jesse Winker, he showed flashes last year, but he fizzled off. But at 209, I think it's a good get to get Winko. Kyle Schwarber, he's on Washington now. A lot of protection in that lineup, and I think Schwarber could go for 30 plus home runs once again this season. Eduardo Rodriguez, he had a lot of health concerns and virus problems last season, but this year it's good to see he'll be back and hopefully he's healthy. 212 James McCann, he now signed the contract with the New York Mets, a four year deal in the offseason, leaving Chicago, and we'll see if McCann could live up to that in the hitting category where he's hit the ball pretty well the last few seasons, no doubt about it for McCann. 
213 Nick Sorlak, another utility man, but he should start for the Rangers at a couple positions this season. 214 Jorge Polanco, he was a hitting machine early on last season and the season before, but he fizzles out. And at 214, though, I think it's good. Andre Semenis, the big get for the Cleveland Indians in the Lindor and Carrasco deal. And we saw Jimenez play very great defense for the Mets and also hit for a good batting average. And he was one of their top prospects. But I think for Cleveland, he's going to play every day over Ahmed or Rosario, who I could see them trading before spring training is over. Sean Manaya, I got him at 216. And I think he's going to be solid for this A team. And we saw him come off the injury last season. And he looked decent. Austin Riley, 217. He should start every day at third base for this Atlanta team he's got pop just batting average and strikeouts have been an issue with him Andrew Benintendi he was supposed to be the next big thing for the Boston Red Sox and he didn't live up to all that hype he was still a pretty solid player but too much hype on him and we seen him traded in the offseason not for much in my opinion to Kansas City Gene Segura 219 he's still a good ball player he still could steal bases and still show pop for this Philly team. Mitch McCarver, will he play every day? Because when he does, we know he could hit a lot of home runs and play well. J.D. Davis, 221. He should start at third base and some left field as well for this New York Met ball club. So we'll see what he could do. 222, Johnny Cueto. Let's see what he could do this season with this San Francisco team. That's not going to be good once again, in my opinion. Robert Ozuna. Roberto Azuna, I mean, 123. We'll see where he signs. He's going to hold the showcase this Friday, so we'll see what he could do and what team could sign him. But he's definitely not going to be a closer or even work up to pitch in many innings in the early year. Randall Gritchick, we saw good power from him early in the offseason, and he remained with Toronto this year, and we'll see what he could do. Adam Duvall last season, he had a great year with 16 home runs and the low average, but I said, hey, why not? I'll take him as a bench player this late in the draft. Jared Walsh, we'll see what he could do. Last season, nine home runs, and this year they're projecting the big first baseman. 29 home runs at this point in the draft. He's a definitely good sleeper pick at 226 in the last round of the draft. Christian Javier, another starter for Houston. And Houston, they got a lot of pitching guys this season. And we'll see if Javier could crack a rotation spot this year, especially with a few guys leaving. And Justin Verlander going to miss most of the season. Drew Smiley, he's on the Braves this season. And at 228 to get a pitcher who's on a good ball club this year who could win a lot of games and pitch for a decent ERA it's a good move to get Smiley at 228 229 Diego Castillo we'll see if he starts or closes this year for this ball club and 230 Nick Magugal to close out things in this draft now we'll go to my team I got Austin Nola he should be a decent catcher starting Almost every day. And the good thing about him, he plays multiple positions. So maybe he's a guy that could play five or six days a week here for this San Diego team. Reese Hoskins, I got him late in the draft. 116 overall. And Hoskins, we know he's got pop, but not great batting average. But to get him at first base this late in the draft was worth the while, in my opinion. Ozzy Albies, I got him 36th overall. And he's a good ball player. He's going to hit for power. He's going to be stealing bases. Then Miguel Sano, low batting average, but he'll have power. I got him late in the draft. Francisco Lindor, he's with his new ball club, the New York Mets. They're hoping to lock him up. And he's a stud and one of the best shortstops in all of baseball. And I think he'll have a good season this year. And he'll be close to those projections at 28 homies, 78, 7 RBIs, 20 bags at 271 batting average. Mike Trout, he fell to me fifth overall, and I couldn't pass him up. I know I could have went Jacob the Grom or him or someone else, but Mike Trout, he's a stud each and every season, and I don't see him slowing down anytime soon, and they're projecting a monster year for Trout. 47 homers, 115 RBIs, six bags, and a 290 batting average. Lewis Robert, the computer picked for me, and it was pretty disappointing that I had to get Robert here at 45, he's going to have a low average. He's not going to hit for much power. I don't think he'll reach the 27 projection in home runs, but he'll steal some bases as Robert. 
Then I got Giancarlo Stanton, 96 Stanton. We know the power he has last season. It was another injury season for him. But I think one season, he's just going to get healthy and play a lot for this Yankee team. And to get him in the later rounds, why not? Labor Torres, I got him 56 overall. And I think Torres, he'll do his thing. Carlos Correa, I stole him, I believe, at 125. He's a big power hitter coming into free agency. Max Scherzer. 25th, I got him in the 4th round. Grinky, Carrasco, these guys, they're pretty solid and top of the rotation. Maybe I could have got better rotation guys at the top. But I filled it out with Hendricks, Dylan Bundy, Patrick Corbin, Stroman, Keiko, Paxton, and Sean Manaya. So I think my rotation is pretty solid. It's a lot of depth. And then for my closes, I went with two simple guys. in Kyle May and Melanson, who I think could get 25 or 30 saves. And you don't need that huge closer in fantasy baseball. So my team, I think it's pretty well-rounded. I'll have a lot of power. I'll have decent batting average. But stolen bases, I'm not going to be good. And some guys, they're going to be injury-prone as well. But I think I got a decent team. And this is just the first mock draft of the season for me in fantasy baseball and I'll come back with more videos from time to time and as the season goes on I mean comes closer here I'll be doing more mock drafts so this was a 10 team fantasy draft Yahoo Sports